Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our Sunday of Resurrection Easter Day service. I'm so glad that you're here with us. I pray that you feel the glory and the power of Christ's resurrection in your household, in your family, with whomever you're worshiping with today. Uh, this is going to be a, a morning prayer service, so please download the bulletin, make sure you have that, but I just want to call your attention to a few things. One of the subtler things we do in Lent is we take our Alleluias and we put them away, put them in a nice little Lent box, and then we get them back out for Easter Day. So there are going to be a lot of Alleluias today in our liturgy, in our songs, so proclaim them loudly and proudly. But also, at the very end of our service, we're going to, going to say a, an ancient hymn proclaiming Christ's resurrection. And I think that would be a wonderful way for you to keep these 50 days of Easter now. And the hymn says this, Alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling over death by death, giving life to those who are in the tombs. Alleluia. So be ready for that at the very end of our service because it's something we want you to belt out as you worship together. And now we'll begin our service. Because in Christ's resurrection, out of the darkness of death, his light shines. We will light the Paschal candle. You may have remembered when we were worshiping here. It has not been lighted since uh, the season of Christmas. So we will light the Paschal candle now to begin our Easter Day service. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to Then let us sing Alleluia Unto Christ our heavenly King Alleluia Who endured the cross and grave Alleluia Sinners to redeem and save risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. 
Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And no one caught in sin remain inside the lie of inward shame. We fix our eyes upon the cross and run to him who showed great love and bled for us. Freely you bled for is risen from the dead trampling over death by death come awake come awake come and rise up from the grave christ is risen from the dead we are one with him again come awake come awake come and rise up from the Beneath the weight of all our sin, you bowed to none but heaven's will. No scheme of hell, no scoffer's crown, no burden great can hold you down. In strength you reign forever, let your church pro. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Oh, death, where is your sting? your victory oh church come stand in the light the glory of god has defeated the night singing oh death 
where is your sting? stand in the light our God is not dead he's alive he's alive Christ has risen from the dead trampling over death by death come awake come awake come and rise up from the grave Christ is risen from the dead we are one with him again come awake come awake Come and rise up from the grave, Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. I cast my mind to Calvary. Where Jesus bled and died for me, I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body and drenched in tears they laid him down in joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone messiah still and all lesson is from Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. 
For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Our final reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated for the sermon. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your victory over death, that you have inaugurated a new reality into all of creation, and that we see and experience that. We love you, we fear you, we are joyful in your presence, and we pray, Lord, do give us eyes to see you this Easter season, especially this Easter season of 2020. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. Well, Easter greetings again to you today. Uh, What a joyful day of resurrection this is for us as we celebrate Uh, through technology, through the internet. Uh, I'm so glad that you've joined us today. So just some brief Easter meditations and reflections on these passages. I wonder if you noticed that the resurrection has an effect on just about every dimension of our being. And first, did you notice that the resurrection affects even creation? Now look at Psalm 114, if you will, in your bulletin. Psalm 114 is retelling the story of the Exodus, which is an actual event that really happened. It was miraculous. It was wonderful. It took 40 years for the people of Israel to leave, to get out of Egypt, run, go through the wilderness in a very circuitous route, and eventually end up in Israel. But as they did, notice what the psalmist says, that the sea parted before them, and that the Jordan was rolled back. Notice also that the mountains ran before them and that the hills skipped and that water sprung out of a rock and a spring was was caused to come out of a flint stone. So in this Exodus moment, which is a type of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection, creation is making the way for God's people to go to the place that he has prepared for them. Even creation experiences the effects of the resurrection. Notice also the trembling, this dimension of both in our human sense of of what we feel and experience even instinctively, but also notice that the earth was trembling. Look there in Matthew 28 on page 3 of your bulletin. We see at verse 2 that behold there was a great earthquake For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. So as the angel descends, earthquake, the ground shakes, the angel rolls the stone away. Now remember, in the beginning of Jesus' story, his origin story in the book of Genesis, there's an angel involved. We know that the angel Gabriel went to Mary to announce to her that she would bear and conceive a son. But in the book of Matthew, we see it from Joseph's perspective, from the line of David, because we remember that Jesus is son of God, he's the Messiah, and he's son of man, son of David, son of Joseph. 
So now the angels are involved again. Again, the resurrection affecting every dimension of our being, every dimension of our creation. So the earth is quaking as the angel comes down and he moves the stone. Notice that Jesus didn't, or the angel didn't have to move the stone for Jesus. Jesus is already gone. But notice too that the guards, those precious guards, I feel bad for them because they experienced quite a shock that day. Look at verse 4. And for fear of him, the guards trembled. Again, recalling that vision of, of the earth, the mountains trembling and the earth quaking for the people of Israel as they departed and came to the place that God prepared for them. Here, the guards tremble. And we think of sort of the fight, flight, or freeze syndrome. God's made us in such a way, our biological makeup, that when we see or in the presence of danger, we can fight, we're ready to fight, we're ready to fly, to get out of there, or sometimes we simply freeze. And that's what happened to the guards. They trembled in the presence of the angel. So the resurrection is causing effects in every dimension of our being and of every dimension of creation. Not only was there trembling and quaking, there was also fear. I find this very interesting. This is a season of life, as you heard me mention last week, that I've had fear. I've thought about fear. I've contemplated fear. I've asked sort of those deep and ultimate questions of life and been afraid of death. And what if this affects my family? Or what if this affects people at St. Bart's or really gets out of control in Dallas? How will we respond? And notice that in the presence of resurrection, there's fear, but it might be a different kind of fear. Look there in verse 4, we see that the guards already, we've noticed them trembling, quaking in their uh, proverbial boots, if you will. But also, verse 5 describes another sense of fear. The angel says to the women, Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary, Mary Lazarus' sister, the angel says to the women, do not be afraid. That's the very first thing that he says to them. Because this resurrection affects every dimension of creation, every dimension of our being, the angel comes to speak words of peace. Fear not. Do not be afraid. I know what, that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen as he said, come see the place where he lay. So, the women, obviously, seeing the angel who was bright white, his face was like lightning, his clothes were like bright snow, they couldn't handle the brightness and the light that came from him, and so they were afraid. We see, too, in verse 8, that the women departed quickly from the tomb with fear. And what else? Great joy. So they have this fear and great joy. This resurrection has done something to them. They have experienced something. Now, I want you to, before we get to the next part of, of when they encounter Jesus, I want you to remember who these two women are. Mary Magdalene, from a little town on the edge of the Sea of Galilee, Magdala, she had been delivered by Jesus. She had been brought into relationship with the living God through Jesus Christ as he preached to her and as he helped her. She is one who anointed Jesus' body for burial, broke this alabaster jar of fine perfume and ointment, put it on his feet, rubbed it with her hair, a very sensual, um, probably a controversial thing to do. And in fact, we know Judas, the betrayer, made a big fuss about it because he said, could not this have been sold and all the proceeds have been given to the poor? But Jesus said, chill, Judas, she is preparing my body for burial. And the other Mary, the brother of Lazarus, she is one, remember, who would sit at Jesus' feet. And as her sister Martha was busy getting the Easter ham ready and making sure there are mimosas, because you got to have mimosas on Easter morning, as she was busy and worried and anxious about many things, the other Mary simply sat. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you're concerned and worried about so many things. Your sister has chosen the better part, 
and it will not be taken from her. Both of these Marys see something in Jesus. They have contemplated at a deeper level, perhaps, than maybe some of other, some of other Jesus' companions, who Jesus really is. And so they're there the first thing in the morning. Maybe to go mourn over the tomb. Maybe to go tend to the body of our Lord Jesus. But they see and they know who he is. So they, when they hear the angel's announcement, they're not only afraid, they not only experience this very real human reaction to a total miracle that reorders the cosmos, but they also have great joy. So they depart with great joy and look, look who they encounter. Verse 9, and behold, Jesus met them and said, greetings. In this Easter season, we're going to have opportunity to greet one another, though from afar. Just last night, we were out throwing the Frisbee. The boys and I were, and the girls were playing with the puppy, and it was a beautiful night. And some friends from St. Bart's drove down our street and drove by, and we, we greeted them. Though we couldn't, you know, get close and hug, we still were so excited to greet one another. And when you greet people... This Easter season, these 50 days, whether it's through social distancing or by God's grace that that gets lifted and we're able to be a little more open with our greetings, no matter how it is, when you greet people, greet them in light of the resurrection. You see, Jesus was bringing them a message of life, even in his word, greetings. He was about to proclaim to them something good and beautiful. And what does he proclaim? They come up. They grab a hold of his feet. They worship him. See, these are two women who knew Jesus, who already were worshipers of Jesus. And isn't it beautiful that the Lord chose them to be the first witnesses of the resurrection? These two women named Mary, the same name as his mother. Isn't it beautiful and powerful that in the wisdom of God, these two souls who have contemplated the only begotten Son, And Lord Jesus Christ got to see him and hold his feet and worship him. And he says this, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. Do not be afraid. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And rightly so. God is a consuming fire. Or as Mr. Beaver tells Lucy and the lion, the witch in the wardrobe, Aslan is a good lion, but he's not safe. He's not tame. We fear God because of his immensity and his power, and yet he comes to us to speak to us greetings. Do not be afraid. And he allows us to come close to him. So we see this trembling that affects every part of our being and creation. We see that fear comes into the picture as a result of the resurrection. And it's a different kind of fear than we have for maybe the coronavirus. It's a different kind of fear. It's a fear of awe as we are invited to trust in God. But lastly, we see that there's an opportunity for for vision, for sight. And we heard the angel mention, go to Galilee, verse 7. Go to Galilee. You will see him there. See, I've told you. And we hear Jesus say the same thing in verse 10. Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers. By the way, where are they? (laughs) They can't Marco Polo in on this one. Go and tell my brothers, go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is a season that we want to see Jesus. This is a season where, like I mentioned last week on Palm Sunday, we need to have our expectations reconfigured so that we can identify the death of Christ as his coming to us, the same death that we've been baptized into. And we need to see that this fact, this settled fact of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, of him trampling down death by death and bestowing life to all, especially to those in the tombs, we need to see that. 
So I love how he says, go back to Galilee. Do you remember Galilee? Do you remember how we've talked about here at St. Bart's that Galilee is a, it's a metaphor for East Dallas. It's out of the way. It's a little bit off to the side. It's not necessarily in the center of power or of influence or wealth or anything like that. But sometimes, in some cases, it's a place that's overlooked and forgotten. And sometimes it's people are overlooked and forgotten. And Jesus says, soon enough, there is going to be an outpouring in Jerusalem on Pentecost. But he says, I want you to go to Galilee because there you're going to see me. Because he has some things to say to his disciples. What does our Lord Jesus have to say to us in this season? And what does it mean for you and for me to go to Galilee? Chris and I were talking earlier. It's good to be alone and have some downtime and alone time. But for some of you, perhaps, it may be impossible. Not just to have time for self-care or to be with yourself or just to be with the Lord. But to have space to be with the Lord. I think Galilee is that space where we can go that's off to the side, that's hidden. You see the work that God had done in Mary and the other Mary, and we hear it echoed in the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, when she treasured these things in her heart, there was a hiddenness to this work of God. And Jesus is sending them to a still more hidden place to teach them. Now, the gospel is public. The gospel is for all. Christ's resurrection is for all to see. But what will the Lord, the resurrected Lord, do in us in that hidden place? How will he cultivate a proper and right fear and love of him? How will he bring about the sort of miraculous and wondrous trembling and shaking where things need to be reordered in our lives, where stones need to be rolled away, and where we need to see our sin in light of His grace and glory. How will the resurrected Lord appear to us in this season in Galilee? Let us pray. O oh God in heaven, we thank you for your grace and your love for us. We pray you would have mercy on us in this season and let your resurrection be evident to us. May we tremble, may we fear, and Lord, may we see you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand together, and we'll say together today the Nicene Creed on page 3 of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. This is the Collect for Easter Day. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may, by your life-giving Spirit, be delivered from sin and raised from death through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, our King, by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the first day of the week, you conquered sin, put death to flight, and gave us the hope of everlasting life. Redeem all our days by this victory. Forgive our sins. Banish our fears. Make us bold to praise you and to do your will, and steal us to wait for the consummation of your kingdom on the last great day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we pray for mission because the truth of the gospel that our Lord has risen from the dead means that we have good news to tell. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. In a moment of silence with yourself or whomever you're worshiping with, I invite you to lift up prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of petition, thinking of this Easter season in the midst of the crisis that we're in. And let us pray together the general with thanksgiving on page five. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will close with this declaration, a short and ancient hymn that Jay mentioned at the beginning of our service. Take these words with you in these next 50 days. Whatever these next 50 days hold, these words are true. So we say them loudly. We say them with hope. Alleluia. Christ, Christ is risen from the dead, dead trampling down, down death by death, and upon those in tombs bestowing life. Alleluia. Happy Easter, St. Bart's.